radio, blowing magic transistor radio, blowing magic transistor. Hello, YouTube and YouTubeettes. Welcome to another album review, a Beach Boys related album review. And today I'm going to review The Flame, an album released in 1970. I don't have an exact date. Produced by Carl Wilson on the label Brothers Records and distributed by Saturday King Records. This was a South African group discovered by Carl Wilson and uh, was one of the first groups that was, and one of the only groups that was signed to Brothers Records. Soon after the flame broke up, uh, two members, Blondie Chaplin and Ricky Fatar, became official members of the Beach Boys on a couple of al albums. All songs written by The Flame. The album cover is a cool black and white photo of the band with a bright white background uh, with n really cool purple lettering. I think this is a fantastic album cover and I give it a 10 out of 10. Now on to the songs. Track number one is See the Light. Uh, and this is a very catchy song. It has a very Beatles-esque vibe to it. I would say from either the White Album or the Revolver kind of era. Uh, just very... Uh, very catchy. I mean, I, th I think it's definitely Beatles worthy in terms of like pre Sgt. Pepper Beatles, but on the good side of it, I pretty much gave a 10 to everything except for the artistic side. I only gave a 7, but it does well across the board. And overall, I give this one a 9.4. Track number two is called Make It Easy, another really catchy song, but I don't think it's quite as good as the first uh, across the board. Um, a little less artistic, uh, the lyrics aren't quite as good either. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a swinging song, it's not a bad song, but I think the first one would be single worthy, this one's not, and that's what I would say would be the difference, but it's, it's not a bad song by any means. I give this one a 7.8. Track number three is Hey Lord. This is another very catchy song, another rocker. I think it's every bit as uh, catchy as See the Light. But I think uh, where it doesn't stack up is the lyrical poetry. And... Uh, you know, other than that, it's pretty comparable to the first song, but um, I still love this song quite a bit, and I give this one an 8.4. Track number four is called Lady. This is a nice song. I would say that there's moments on here that sound a lot like Paul McCartney, especially when they do the... Uh, do to do do's but you know the rest of it doesn't quite sound like Paul McCartney or the production style either uh, so they've kind of made it their own but I just thought I'd point that out it's a it's a pretty song um, there's something that you know uh, there it's not a blow away classic or anything like that but it's very nice and uh, I give this one an 8.0 Everywhere I go, caution calls for me to... Track number five is Don't Worry Bill. And I actually first heard this song in a live version with the Beach Boys on the Endless Harmony soundtrack from uh, 1998. But the live was in the 70s when The Flame, or when Blondie and Ricky were with the Beach Boys. And they combined this song with Wonderful from, you know, uh, I guess they were doing the Smiley Smile version, which is a weird pairing, <laughs> you know. Uh, 
This song, Don't Worry Bill, has a very Beatles-esque, another Beatles-esque kind of song. Um, and it's a, it's another catchy number. Uh, I think it's got its moments uh, that are a bit artistic. Uh, a great hook. I think that's the strength of the record is the hook. And so another one that could be single worthy. <clears throat> and I give this one an 8.6. Track number six is Get Your Mind Made Up, another fantastically catchy song. Um, you know, I keep saying sounds like the Beatles, but I guess a lot of classic rock around 1970 was trying to sound like the Beatles because they were the most popular band. Uh, this one a little less uh, so, I think, but there's still mo elements of it that remind me a lot of the Beatles. And... Uh, very catchy song, really good lyrics as well. And I give this one a 9.0. Track number seven is called Highs and Lows. And this, up to this point, is the most artistic song on the album. And I'm not sure who the lead singer is, if it's Ricky Vitar or somebody else in the group because uh i mean blondie chaplin is the easiest one for me to figure out and ricky i've heard i think he sings lead on a beach boy song as well but this could be one of the other because i think steve uh ricky fatar has a couple of brothers in here like steven fatar I, I can't remember the first name um but if you know who sings lead on this song let me know um but i kind of it, you know, again, to bring the Beatles into this, while most of the other ones that I've mentioned s sound more like Paul McCartney type songs, this sounds more like a John Lennon type song. But after the chorus, um, there's this really cool organ solo thing going on that's really cool. And uh, some, you know, some more instrumentation and, and production things going on that I really enjoy about this song. And I give this one an 8.8. .8. Track number eight is called I'm So Happy. And it's another very catchy song, but I think it's a little more unique. It uh, doesn't quite sound like a Beatles song to me on this one, which is you know, I think it's a good thing when you can sound different, although it definitely fits the time. It's nothing extraordinary or unique, but um, I think that there are some elements of creativity in this one. And I really love after the first verses, um, the, the way the guitar is playing and then kind of doing these strange uh, I don't know how you explain that, but um, and you know some beautiful melodies in there and everything. And uh, this is just a really good song. Another one that I think is single worthy as well. And I give this one an 8.6. Track number nine is called The Dove. And this is the most artistic song up to this point. Uh, very interesting key changes and things and, a, and a, a pretty little melody line. I love the backing vocals, uh, the harmonies um, on it. It's quite short, but it's, it's a really good song and really good poetic lyrics. And I give this one an 8.8. .8. Track number 10 is called Another Day Like Heaven, and this is now the most artistic song on the album. Uh, I won't say that again, uh, but I was just saying up to that point before, and now I'm telling you this is the most artistic song, period, uh, on this album. Uh, it has a we weird intro, and then um, much of it sounds like a, 
you know, a soft pop song, you know, nothing special, but then it throws in these beautiful ballad, uh, beautiful um, lines of harmony that are a little off on terms of with, you know, strange uh, chord changes and things. And then moves on to this really cool, like, I don't know if it's a Moog synthesizer sound, uh, some kind of keyboard that's playing uh, interesting things. And so just, you know, some in very cool things thrown in here that, that make this a very interesting song. And overall, I give this one a 9.0. I haven't forgotten the reprise. Uh, I'm going to include that in my final score. I'm going to just keep going here. I'm not going to do a separate review for that track but um, the album flow is a 10 out of 10 I think this is a single vision Carl Wilson does a great job on the production all the songs fit together very well I think this is a good album um, all the songs are catchy um, and there's some artistic moments among uh, among them and it's not like Pink Floyd creative but it's you know it's creative enough and it keeps you interested throughout. And I, I would have been interested to see if the flame had stuck together where they might have gone. I mean, we get hints of that on the Beach Boys, uh, Carl's and the Passion, Carl and the Passion, So Tough, and the Holland albums um, from the songs written by uh, Blondie and Ricky. But um, we don't really know where this band might have gone, but you see a lot of potential there and a lot of talent. So now I will pull out my handy dandy computer and calculate my formula. And this album gets an 8.85 out of 10. Thank you and have a wonderful day.